Here is an object in the scene. Select it and tap Behaviors to start editing code for this object. Right now, we don't have any code inside of this object, hence why we start on a blank canvas. So let's add some code. In Hyperpad, we refer these code blocks as behaviors. There are a bunch of categories we can choose from and we can use search to find specific behaviors if we need to. On the behavior list, you can tap on a specific behavior to open its documentation. This is where you can learn what the behavior does and how to use it. Tap it again to add it to the editor. Alternatively, you can drag and drop it if you like. Now we have a behavior in the editor. Behaviors generally fall into two groups, event behaviors and action behaviors. This behavior is an event behavior. You can tell because it has a lightning icon as its connector. This behavior is also an event behavior because it uses a heartbeat icon as its connector. So if a behavior doesn't have a lightning or heartbeat icon, it is an action behavior. You can connect behaviors by dragging from a connector to another behavior. Behaviors can be connected in any way to achieve whatever you're going for. Event behaviors trigger other behaviors when something happens, like when you start touching an object, for example, or while an object collides with another object, or when the progress of a health bar changes. Action behaviors do something when they are triggered, such as changing the color of an object, moving the screen, or playing an animation on a graphic. Action behaviors can also trigger other behaviors. Let's start with something simple. Let's program it to have the object change its color when touched. Add a started touching behavior. You can tap on a behavior to see its properties. Here, you can edit any input fields. These can be text fields, drop down options, toggles, or something else. Every behavior has unique properties that you can modify to achieve something that you want. For example, in this started touching behavior, you can tap on this box to select another object in the scene. The correct object is already selected, so I can just press X to cancel. You can tap on this tab here to see the documentation of the behavior. Don't worry about this tab for now, you'll learn about this later. Now let's add another behavior, set color. Connect started touching to set color. Notice that set color is an action behavior. It does not have a lightning or heartbeat icon. Inside the set color behavior, let's use a different color so we can see the change happening. And there we go. We've just programmed our object to change its color when we start touching it. You may have noticed that the set color behavior has a clock icon. Some action behaviors can have this. This means that the behavior can take some time to run before triggering other behaviors. We refer this as a completion behavior because it triggers other behaviors when it completes something. Some other behaviors trigger after a set delay. We refer to those as delay behaviors because they trigger other behaviors after a delay. For other action behaviors, the ones without any icon, they trigger other behaviors instantly. So in our case, we have the color transition over time. According to the documentation, the duration determines how long it takes for the object to transition to its new color. So if you set this value to be a smaller number, the color changes faster. And because the behavior takes time to run, this means it can trigger behaviors after a delay too. For example, after the object changes its color, we can have something else happen. Perhaps you want to rotate the object once the color has finished transitioning. Cool, but what if we want the color and rotation changes to happen at the same time? We can disconnect the rotate to angle behavior from its parent by holding on the wire. This cuts the connection so it can no longer be triggered after the color changes. We can connect the started touching behavior to the rotate to angle behavior. And there we go. We can playtest our project. We can now see the color and rotation animations happening at the same time. Nice. Okay, what happens if we remove the started touching behavior so that there's nothing triggering the action behaviors? Well, if an action behavior doesn't have any behaviors connected from the top, it will run immediately when the scene starts. This can be useful if you want something to happen when the user starts playing your project. For example, you have a timer behavior. 
It's an action behavior that triggers other behaviors repeatedly from time to time. It's not connected by any behaviors from the top. As a result, in this case, the timer behavior fires a bullet every few seconds without anything needed to trigger it. This is great for enemies that can shoot bullets from time to time. Okay, that's cool. Let's do something more complex. We have a scene where there are a couple labels. Tapping on this label will add the values of the two numbers above together and will change this label to reflect the sum. Let's see how this can be done. I will select this object and go to its behaviors. Let's add a started touching behavior. Make sure this is selecting the add label. Now add a get label behavior. This behavior will get the value of a label which can be used in our addition operation. In the get label behavior, let's select the first label. For the sake of making code easier to interpret, we can rename this behavior. Tap on the name of the behavior in the properties to rename it. Let's call this one number one. Connect started touching to this behavior. Now let's do the same thing but for the second number. To make this quicker, we can duplicate this behavior by tapping this icon here. Nice. And it even renamed the behavior for us. In the duplicated get label behavior, let's have it select the second number. Of course, connect started touching to this behavior as well. Cool. Now when we touch the add label, we get the values of the first and second number for the operation. But we don't do anything with them yet. So let's get an add values behavior and connect started touching to it. Note that the order matters here, because in Hyperpad, behaviors execute from top to bottom, then left to right. We can arrange our behaviors like this, and it will work exactly the same as long as all the behaviors don't have a clock icon. This also works, but this doesn't work because addition happens before getting the values we need for the operation. We want to make sure that we get all the values we need before we perform addition. Moving on, some behaviors can output values. For example, the add values behavior returns the sum of the two given numbers. When editing behaviors, some behaviors can have a green icon. These are outputs. You can drag outputs into an input field to use it there. In our case, in our add values behavior, we want to add the two numbers together. So let's drag the output from number one into the first input field. As you can see, the get label behavior has multiple outputs, but we are interested in getting the value of the text. So let's just select text. Although it says text, behaviors automatically convert values into a desired type during runtime, so we don't have to worry about data types unlike in traditional programming. This text output will always be treated as a number in this case, even when giving a non-numeric value. Alright, now let's get the output of the second get label behavior and plug it into the second input field. Let's select text again, and we've just programmed it to add two numbers together. Nice, but we need to display the result somehow. So to do that, let's get a set label behavior. And in it, we can set the text to be the sum of the operation. Let's also select the text in the scene to change and connect the started touching behavior to this behavior. And we're done. We've just created a very simple addition calculator. There are a bunch of special behaviors in Hyperpad that can implement some built-in custom functionality or even interact with the operating system. We've got player controls, keyboard and mouse interaction, and lots more. You can learn more about them by reading the documentation or by tapping this help button and going to the manual and then searching for it for examples. All right, so let's use one of these special behaviors. Let's have these labels be editable by keyboard. We can use the edit text field behavior for this. Oh, and make sure it's connected by a started touching behavior. In both of these behaviors, make sure to select the first label. And in the edit text field behavior, we can use the numeric keyboard. See how cool this is? We can duplicate both of these behaviors and this time have them select the second label. Awesome. And we've just made these two labels editable by keyboard. Let's try it out. So when I touch the first label, it brings up the keyboard and I can edit it. I can also do the same thing for the second one. So this edit text field behavior opens up the keyboard to edit a text in the scene. And they're under I started touching behavior, so you need to touch the text to edit it. 
I just think it's pretty cool. You can just combine behaviors in a way to make them work exactly the way you want. So let's try adding one and three together. And when I tap the add button, the result displays four. So it works. Nice. We can input any number we want and even text. It will still work. You're probably wondering why these behaviors need to be under the started touching behavior. That's because a behavior only updates its output when it is triggered. So in this case, we want to make sure the values are up to date before performing the addition operation. All right, remember when we glanced over this? These are tags. You can select objects in the scene and apply tags to them. This allows your behaviors to manipulate objects using these tags. It's very cool. For example, you can move multiple objects at once using tags since multiple objects can have the same tag. And this is just one behavior moving all of these objects. And the cool thing about tags is that when it is used in an event behavior, it takes context into account. For example, I have a simple scene with a player and a bunch of coins. All of the coins are assigned a coin tag. I want to make it so when the player collides with an object with the coin tag, the coin is destroyed and we add to a score. The cool thing is that Hyperpad is smart and it knows that you only want to destroy the colliding coin instead of every single coin. This idea applies to every single event behavior that can use tags. You can have it so touching an object will only change the color of the object that was touched. You can have it so hitting an object with a bullet will only destroy the object that was hit. You can have it so when an object hits an edge of the screen, the object that hit the edge of the screen will change its graphic. You get the picture. Tags can be extremely useful when you want many objects to act a certain way. Now, let's move into something a bit more complex. Control flow. I'm talking loops and conditionals. Let's start with the if behavior, the behavior responsible for decision making. This is like the if else statements found in traditional programming. You can define a condition and the behavior will only be able to trigger other behaviors if its condition is being met. Remember, this is an action behavior, not an event behavior. So it is best used if it's connected by other behaviors from the top. For example, I have a level where there is a door that requires 50 coins to pass. So here are the behaviors. When the player collides with the door, it gets how many coins I have and checks if I have 50 coins or more. The behaviors under the if behavior will only trigger if the condition is met. And that's all for if statements. It's really that simple. When executed, it triggers other behaviors when a condition is met. That's pretty much it. Moving on to loops. Loops allow you to repeatedly trigger behaviors over and over again. For example, when I touch this object, it will loop the behaviors connected under the loop behavior five times. So it will trigger this add to score behavior five times, and each time it adds by one. So in the end, this will add by five every time we touch this object. The loop behavior has four different modes. The mode that we just used is repeat, where we only have to specify the amount of times the behavior triggers. The for each mode allows you to iterate through all values of an array or all keys of a dictionary. The for each tag mode allows you to loop through objects containing a tag, so you can do something like move every single object with a specific tag by a random amount. The conditional mode is the standard for loop that traditional programmers are familiar with. You have a start index and a condition that your index must meet for the loop to continue. The loop behavior outputs the count, index, and current value, which can be used in other behaviors. If you need to, you can use the continue behavior to skip an iteration, or the break behavior to exit out of the loop just like in traditional programming. There is one more thing you need to know about control flow. Since Hyperpad uses a flowchart system, you might need a way to disable a behavior from running. You can do this by tapping this on off button, and you can see how the behavior turns gray when it's disabled. When a behavior is disabled, it will never be executed unless it is enabled again. Maybe you want something to only be active at a specific time, or you want something to happen once. For example, in this case, colliding with the lever can open the door. Notice how I can't interact with the lever again. I can only trigger the sequence once. 
That is because when the player collided with the lever, I disabled it using this behavior. The set behavior state behavior. What a mouthful. It can be used to control what specific behaviors are able to run. In this case, I disabled the collision event behavior so it does not get triggered again. You can also use this behavior to toggle, enable, or execute other behaviors. And that is all you need to know about control flow inside Hyperpad. Now let's talk variables. A variable is a container that stores some information. For example, you might want to keep track of how many times you have touched an object, or you might want to keep track of the player's name. Technically, almost every single behavior in Hyperpad is a variable, but maybe you want to store your own custom variable. You can do this in two ways, a value behavior or a box container behavior. Value behaviors can store a value from another behavior. Its true value is only updated when executing the behavior, like any other behavior that you used. For example, you might want to store the result of a behavior to use later, and you can get the value of the behavior by using its output just like any other behavior. Box containers are different. They can store the result of multiple behaviors and it has a default value. It simply outputs the latest value from another behavior. If no values have been updated, it will output the default value. Just like the value behavior, you can use its output just like any other behavior. For example, if the box container stores the result of this add values behavior, when the add values behavior is triggered, the stored result in the box container updates to reflect the newest value. And that is all for box containers, but that's not everything. Almost every text field in Hyperpad has a green box on the left. You can tap on the green box to create a new behavior that can be used to update the input field on the fly. You can use this behavior to update the value to be whatever you want. If you want to, you can toggle this on so it can re-trigger the behavior, which will make it use its newly updated value. So now you know how to store, retrieve, and update variables. That is everything you need to know about variables inside Hyperpad. And that concludes this video. We've just went over the basics of Hyperpad's visual coding system. In this video, you were introduced to the behavior system, and we went over action and event behaviors, how to edit a behavior, delay and completion behaviors, order of code execution, output fields, object tags, loops and conditionals, disabling and enabling behaviors, and variables. I hope you enjoyed this rundown of Hyperpad's visual coding system. Hopefully you learned a lot and you can use what you gained from this video to make some amazing projects. Thanks for watching.